Hello everyone and welcome to the free and live Joomla SEO, a step-by-step -step tutorial brought to you by cloudaccess.net. We are the official and exclusive provider of the demo trial of Joomla at demo.joomla.org. My name is Bernie. I'm going to be your moderator and John, John, uh, Jonathan Gaffel, excuse, excuse me, is going to be hosting tonight's webinar. Uh, just a quick introduction to cloudaccess.net before we begin. As I mentioned, we are the provider of the demo trial of Joomla at demo.joomla.org. Joomla chose us because we share the value of open source um, software with them. And no other company has a business relationship with the Joomla project quite like us. We are unique because we are an internet hosting company that offers phone support as part of a standard hosting package. If you'd like to speak with someone as you develop your Joomla application, you can call us and we can give you direct help. We also provide a managed backup service where we can save your work and restore it for you if you run into an issue. We also manage 100% of the Joomla platform for you. You can get Joomla a couple of ways. You can launch a server and configure a database and then install the software. We take care of all that server-side setup for you, and you can launch unlimited Joomla sites through our platform in about 60 seconds each. And if you need a custom domain name, that's not a problem. You can purchase one through us as you develop your site, or if you already own one, you can point one to your site hosted with us. And lastly, I'd like to introduce Jonathan Gaffel. He, he's the project manager at cloudaccess.net. He is very knowledgeable with the Joomla content management system. He's presented at the Joomla Days events in Chicago, and he'll be a presenter at the upcoming Joomla World Conference in San Diego, I believe it is, in November. San Jose. San, San Jose. Jose. Very good. So I'm going to pass the screen over to you, John, and let you get started. Let me know if you need any help. All right. Thank you very much, Bernie. And hello, everybody. Um, today, let me get my screen shown here. All right. Bernie, can you just verify, are you guys seeing the front end of Cloud Access or the Joomla SEO checklist? We are seeing uh, the front end of cloudaccess.net. Okay, just want to make sure you got multiple monitors here. It's tough to see uh, which one. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to start with here, um, we came up with a document that kind of walks you through step by step. Um, from the starting standpoint of you know a brand new website, um, obviously Jim, uh, Bernie walks you through the process of creating a, a basic brochureware, what we call brochureware website in the other webinars. We're going to kind of take off from that point right there um, actually using one of his webinar pages. Uh, this is an art gallery. Uh, so we're going to be taking off uh, this, this SEO session with a, um, a art gallery site, but ultimately what you need to do is kind of envision the advice that we're going to give you and, and try to, try to you know, transpose it into your own industry, which could be quite different, but ultimately the, the principles should be in parallel. So um, basically, I, well, a couple of things that we're, we're uh, going to start with here. Um, uh, an art gallery would be a local business, something that is not necessarily an uh, uh, international or even national company that may just sell art locally. Um, so if you're if you're an e-commerce site that you know you've got products that you're trying to sell to everybody in, in the country, but not necessarily in one individual area, this this would probably apply a little bit less to you. But ultimately, I think the majority of sites out there would be, you know, a brochureware site where you have a local establishment. And of course, if somebody was looking for your services across the country, that may or may not be possible to deliver. So um, I'm going to try to give you more of a local aspect of this. You know, we're going to go through uh, some of the some of the tactics on getting your Google local listing and Bing local listings to show up because we all know those actually come above the organic listings. Uh, we're also going to go through the steps of, uh, of um, uh, determining your target market, which could potentially be uh, separated out by you know demographic, by um, specific location. Uh, then we'll go through some keyword research, uh, find out exactly what these people are searching to get to your site, and then of course we've got to concern ourselves with the writing of the content and maybe going through the content and and doing some on-page optimization. Uh, then we can. Do some complex things like restructuring your links to maybe have more keywords in them, and then uh, a few things uh, that that is completely necessary for all website owners is to to have uh, webmaster tools accounts um, in the major search engines to, you know, kind of instruct the search engines what content you have and where to look for it and all that stuff. 
Um, and there are some other topics that we're going to go through uh, during this session as well. But uh, one thing I want to do is get you to go to our, um, everybody here could just go to our front end of our, the front end of our site, cloudaccess.net, and go to Training and Joomla Knowledge Base. And what I'm going to do is walk you to the document that you can follow along during the webinar. And kind of uh, some links are on there, and it's just good to have, uh, have some visual uh, resources here. So click on the Additional Resources tab. And then we're going to want to click on the search engine optimization uh, link there. It's a category. And what it's going to do is it's going to present um, all the different SEO documents that we have. And what I've done is I've, I've put those together into kind of a, I guess I wouldn't call it a checklist so much, but, um, uh, but it's, it's uh, you know, step one, step two, step three style. Uh, so it should help you out. Um, so go ahead and take a look at that. Just get that page loaded up on your, in your browser, and you can refer to that um, as we're going through this. So you'll notice um, the first step here, of course, is determining our target market. And um, you can go ahead and read through that. I'm just going to kind of, uh, kind of follow through it as, as we go. Um, so, of course, we're doing this from the standpoint of an art gallery. If you're a, you know, a local um, um, bread maker or maybe you sell rain gutter or um, you know, maybe your industry is a little bit different and you could travel you know, across the state, maybe you, you, um, uh, maybe you sell uh, pots and pans, who, who knows. Ultimately, the, the, um, the general concept is the same. Um, we need to figure, you know, an art gallery, our demographic is going to be probably people who are, you know, we, we need to determine an education level, probably people who are pretty well educated. Um, believe it or not, Google and Bing, all these major search engines, they actually rate their content uh, according to um, the reading level, if you will, from let's say they've got a second grade reading level to a fifth grade reading level. And if your content is written, you know, very, very proper English and uses big words, they actually rate that differently, not necessarily better, but differently than something that is, is you know, um, maybe like a quickly written tutorial that, um, uh, that ultimately um, uh, is just meant to go and learn something. So there's different writing methods when you're putting your content together. And that helps determine um, if, if we're shooting for a demographic here of educated people, artists, and not to say that uh, you know all uh, all um, people that are going to the site are well educated and whatnot, but um, but ultimately we want to make sure in this instance that we are writing very proper. Uh, that's it's kind of an assumption I know, but but in in terms of coming up with your target demographic, um, your target market, you kind of need to make assumptions. Need to know who your audience is. Um, so I would say for an art gallery, we're looking for probably not people that are 18 and under. Um, probably uh, we're, we're going to want to focus this locally, but ultimately, of course, because it's online, everybody can see it that's on the Internet. So we're going we're gonna to focus it locally. We're going to think, well, we want people to stop by the art gallery. And if we're in, we, we happen to be in Traverse City, Michigan here, when somebody searches art gallery in Traverse City, we want our site to come up. Um, so basically, we, we've figured you know, our, our basic target market. Uh, what we need to do is figure out what these people are searching in order to come to our site. Um, let's just do a quick search, because obviously we know that people are going to be searching Art Gallery. Let's try Art Gallery in Traverse City. This is just doing a Google search through my browser here. And, of course, we have some, some Google local listings coming up here, and then some organic listings. And it's kind of cool because you could actually, what we're doing right now is we're looking at our competition. Um, Denos Museum here is our competition. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at their, uh, take a look at their site. And they're just showing the current exhibits that are there. Um, but uh, I want to show you something cool here that you can do. You can kind of do, take a peek into their marketing within this page that happens to get a pretty good rank on Google. I'm going to right click. In some browsers, it's a, it's a bit different. I'm using Google Chrome. But in some browsers, you have to you know, click on uh, the menu. But what you want to find is View Page Source. And once you're in here, this is actually a fairly bad example because they don't really have 
much. Uh, what I'm trying to get you to is some metadata that's in, in the site. But ultimately, uh, this page doesn't have much. They've got, a, of course, a, a page title. And that's about it. So let's find a better example here. Let me go back to our uh, listings here. And I'll find more of a, um, I know the Denos Museum actually is more of a, um, a school establishment. So let's say, here we go, Seed Studio Art Gallery. Hey, John, as this is loading, I just want to remind everybody that they can raise hands or post questions in the slide out question area. If they have any questions, um, we can get to those at the end of the webinar. All right. Okay, so here you can see we've got uh, you know a normal looking website. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go view page source. There we go. This is what we want to see. Now this is a great way, uh, what we're doing here is determining the keywords that we want to uh, use in our website. This is a great way uh, to find that. We can look at our, our um, uh, competition and see that their um, meta description, meta keywords, and title um, are all just right out here in front of us. And we can see what they've done, um, in short, to, to get to this spot. Um, so here you can see they're using fine art painting. They're using some, some proper nouns here. Um, original art painting, and so um, you know, meta keywords doesn't mean a whole lot anymore. But you know, the description and the title are very important. And so these people, as you can see, they have Traverse City in both their title and their description. And you can actually see that when you look at their listing. You can see Fine Art Seed uh, Seed Studio Traverse City, and then the description here. You've got Traverse City, Michigan. Definitely uh, recommend. Putting your if you're if you're trying to rank locally, put the name of your city uh, on there. It's pretty important. Okay, so that's one way to determine. You know, get some ideas for um, for your the keywords that you should be shooting for. Maybe you know what your competition is, and and just go and s you can look at their so the source on their page, and you can see what their meta keywords, uh, meta title. Uh, sorry, that's not a t uh, meta tag. The title and the meta description uh, show. But I'm going to show you another tool here. Um, you'll notice on the document that, that I pointed you to, we have a link to the Google AdWords keyword tool. This thing's pretty cool. We'll take a look at it. What this is, it's a tool that Google provides everybody uh, in, actually in hopes to make, make them more successful in using Google AdWords, which is actually you know, a, a paid marketing um, strategy. But ultimately, you can use this for other uh, other um, searches as well. So let's let's just go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna jump off of one of their uh, their key phrases, fine art, and we're gonna go ahead and put that into the AdWords tool, and we're gonna see what comes up. It's gonna make me type in a little captcha here. Okay. Now what's coming up here is a whole bunch of not only the fine art keyword that we put in, but it's also providing me a bunch of alternate keyword ideas. And it's telling me even you know whether there's low or high competition for that. Of course, it's not giving you, it used to have a little graph here, but they don't do that anymore. Um, and it tells me how many times this is searched on a global or local basis. Um, of course, you know what I'm doing here. This would be a local search. I'm trying to find art gallery in Traverse City, but of course, I might just be searching for art gallery, uh, which which would be a much more difficult um, keyword to, to rank for. So, it's important to to know that you know for a lot of these, if if you're searching, if you're trying to rank locally for art gallery or fine art. It's totally possible, and, and it's totally possible to rank globally as well, but um, ultimately you just need to start making a list, and I would say even just starting out with a list of 10, but that's just personal, personal preference. Um, start out with a list of 10 keywords, not necessarily including fine art. Uh, you could try other, um, look at, you know, you could even, I wouldn't maybe not go with your competition, just kind of do some brainstorming yourself and figure, you know, what would I search to try to get to my industry or my site? And um, so your entertainment's probably not the best one. Let's see what else we got here. It's interesting that they would do entertainment in there. Let's see. Uh, okay, original art painting. Let's try that one. Okay. 
and this is going to give me some completely different results, but ultimately uh, all great ideas. And you're going to want to go through and probably you know choose the ones that are low competition if possible. But you gotta you gotta look at this and see. Well, the low competition ones are the ones that really don't get as many searches. Um, it's kind of it's interesting to see this art paintings as it's saying a low competition with 1.2 million searches. Uh, sometimes you can't go by that. I wouldn't I wouldn't you know trust these 100 percent, but they're a great general indicator. Um, so once you've made a list of all the keywords that you want to use, and you can actually kind of use this tool to uh, to set those up as well. You can save these. I haven't done this in a while, but um, you can save these in, in a yep, save all. There we go. Yeah, it saves them in a little bucket, and you can go back and and um, here we go. My keyword ideas, and you can go um, look at individual ones and search them and see what comes up. So get used to this keyword tool. It's pretty neat. Okay, so now we have a list of keywords. Um, I'm just just for example purposes. We'll we'll um, get a uh, notepad out and we'll do like, you know, we decided on I believe fine art. Uh, let's do painting. Of course, we want Traverse City. Um, and let's do um, a couple of different mediums like oil paints. Maybe our art gallery focuses on oil paints. And okay, so we have a little list here. And what we're going to want to do is go through our content writing process. Um, this can be uh, pretty time consuming. I would say, uh, I'm going to take a look at what Bernie's got here. He's basically just put some Latin um, sample text on here. But we can, we can go through and give you some ideas as to how to, how to um, put together the content properly. Um, I'm already logged into the back end of the Joomla site. So I will uh, just jump into that home page article and, and get going. Oh, it looks like my uh, session stopped here. Hold on one second. There we go. All right. Okay. So we've got to find the home page article here. It looks like um, welcome to the art gallery. Okay, as it stands right now, you'll see he's got a bunch of text on the page and he's got a page title. Um, one thing we would recommend against is using the page title uh, as just just printing it on all pages because and I can show you this we have um, a little tool here called Firebug. I'm going to inspect this. Now you notice how this page title here is generated within Joomla as an H2. That would be um, a step past H1. H1 tags are typically looked at as more important than H2. So, um, so what I would recommend doing is making it so these don't show up and we're going to create our own title. And we also want to include our fine art keyword because this is the one that we're going to go for. You know, let's say this one gets more searches than the other one. We also probably want to include the Traverse City. So we're going to make the page title Fine Art in Traverse City. All right, so I'm going to go down to article options here, and I'm going to disable or hide the page title on this particular article. Now you can do this on a global scale as well. I'll quickly show you that. Just so, uh, just going to open up another. This is the same, the back end of the site. You can have open in two tabs, by the way. And I'm going to go to content and article manager. And on both the article, the category, and the featured, cat featured articles, on all these different managers, you have this little options button up here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And here I have the ability to globally, well, that means within the whole site, turn the title off. Go ahead and save and close. And you see how that title disappeared. We're just going to go into the article and we're going to put that title back, but the way we want it. Oops. And I'm just going to go in and add it through the HTML. You can do this. And I'll show you how to do it through the um, through the front end. But uh, I'm just going to go H1 just so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to go find art in Traverse City, Michigan. All right, and we'll look at that. Now, 
We'll go ahead and save that and take a look at it on the front end. All right, there's our fine art in Traverse City, Michigan. You see it looks a little bit different. That's because the template that you, excuse me, the template that you choose, actually that's the, the point of having the H1, H2, H3. They, they're going to be styled differently. And um, to get into changing how they're styled is a bit more complex. Um, I would probably recommend just getting the content on the pages and worrying less about how it looks and more about just the structure. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a little um, this little firebug tool again. It's very useful for developers if you uh, want to look at the code. And do a little inspect, take a look at it. Now you can see that this is an H1 tag instead of an H2. Far more important. When Google looks at this page, they're going to say, whoa, this is H1. This is what this page is about and ultimately um, what the content is about as well. Of course, this content has nothing to do with that, and we'll address it in a second. So as I mentioned, you can, you can go in and you can add this stuff through the uh, what you see is what you get editor, you know, fine art. Oops. And you can, you can decide, well, I want this to be, you know, H2, H3. All that stuff can be done here too. I just I prefer to do it within the HTML editor. So let's let's do a bit more um, optimization on this particular article. Now we've got the H1 tag there, which tells what the main um, contents of the article is about. But you know, ultimately, let's we're going to go ahead and, and just write something here. Okay, so Fine Art in Traverse City, Michigan. We have the art district. And we have the, I'm just going to come up with a couple of different, you know, you could think of them as subcategories within the article, but what we're going to do is we're going to make these the H2 or heading 2 um, portions of it. So we've got the art district in Traverse City, and then we've got the, um, uh, let's say, annual, let's spell that right, art show. And these two. I'm going to put some content underneath each one of these. They're kind of like topics. I'm going to make these H2s. And under Art District, um, you know, visit the Art District um, to have a good time. Oops. Okay. So, of course, we'd want a whole bunch of content in here, and I'm going to actually, just to make it look better, I'm going to go and grab some sample uh, Latin text off of the home page here. And as always, it's best practice to go through and paste your stuff into Notepad just so you know for a fact that all the formatting is removed from it. Okay. All right, and so we'll go through and add a bit of content here. So the idea is within this content, you should be using these main keywords, but, but you want to make it natural. You don't want to go, and they call it keyword stuffing, where you go and you add a, add a whole bunch of keywords, and, and, um, and Google can see beyond that. Be natural about it. Oh, got stuck there. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have information under the art district here. Let's do the same for the annual art show. And this is not going to look very pretty, but you be able to get the point. Yeah, the text is wrapping around the image and stuff like that. You can see it doesn't look that great, but ultimately, the, uh, the content within this is structured in a way where Google can see we've got the most important statement, which is the topic of the article. And then we have the subheadings, which kind of describe the text within that specific, the paragraph below, within that specific block. And same goes, you know, and you can drop this down. You can use heading three tags. Um, of course, uh, we'll, we'll go through the interlinking of um, uh, we'll go through the interlinking within articles using anchor text, but uh, but that's the basic structure. Uh, and let's just we'll go on to the next one here. Okay. Now let's take a look at the uh, the URL structure within this site. Go back here. 
There we go. Sorry, guys. Okay, so we went through the reading levels, keyword dens density, the heading tags. The URL structure within Joomla is, um, is pretty straightforward. Um, you've got your domain name, and then it actually goes by the menu structure, the menu aliases. So we'll, let's, let's take a look at one of the current menu items that, that Bernie has put together in this webinar, and, and we can uh, try to construct it in a better way. So I'll close this out. Here we've got art classes and drawing. Let's take a look at this one. You can see pretty clearly that it just follows, you know, art classes, and then we've got the drawing page, which is basically following the submenu that's available there. Let's say, for instance, we know we're using the keyword fine art as much as possible, you know, while still being natural. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go and try to make this URL, even though we want to keep this by keep this saying art classes, we're going to make the URL say fine art classes. Okay. Now we went to let me close out of here. What we're going to want to do is go and edit that menu item. We're going to go to main menu. We're going to scroll down to the art classes menu item. And we don't need to change the title of that menu item. All we really need to do is change the alias. Now, it's important to note that if you have already, already have your site indexed by Google and you've, your pages are, are listed in there, when you change the alias of these menu items, you're going to change the URL. And, um, and that's, that's actually uh, an important thing to take, account, take into account because then users that are clicking on your uh, Google listings are going to get a 404 page. Um, actually, this would be a good time to just jump in, and, and we can do uh, we can do a redirect while we're making changes. I'll do this one right now since we're halfway through it, and then the next one we're going to go and set up so we can redirect the requests for that old menu item to the new one. So here we're just going to change fine dash art classes, and go ahead and save and close. All right, and of course, what we're going to do here, I'm going to refresh this page, and it's actually not going to show up because this page no longer exists with this URL. We have fine dash art classes. So now Google is going to go through, recrawl your site, and they're going to find this new URL, and they will eventually update it. And they'll also probably rank you slightly higher, you know, it may just one, one point out of many, that, of the one factor out of many that they take into consideration. But um, this fine art is going to be now a keyword that's, that's, you know, taken into account. All right, let's do another one, and this time we're going to do it with sculpting. And you notice that it actually changed the fine art in sculpting. It changed the path for every sub-menu item that's underneath this. But let's say, for instance, we want to go and we want to change this um, specific URL to say fine art sculpting. Of course, I don't think that's it's probably not the best idea because honestly, at this point, it would be what we would call keyword stuffing, where we're just getting the keyword in there as many times as possible. So uh, in the interest of, of not doing that, let's choose another keyword. We're going to do Traverse City Sculpting. How about that? Okay, so... I'm going to go back into the menu manager. I'm already here. Menu, menu manager. And i um, going to go down to sculpting. Now, actually, before I make this change, I'm going to um, go into the redirect manager. I'm going to do this in my other tab so we can keep this open. See, I opened my other tab there. I'm going to components and then redirects. Clear out what's already there. You can actually see right here where... I got that error page before. It actually keeps track of that, and that's what we want to we want to go through and, and um, make it so these requests get forwarded to the correct place. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this out of here. Put that in the trash, and I've got a fresh fresh space here. Now you're going to watch as soon as I change this menu item. See, I just went through to edit the menu item. I'm going to change this particular uh, menu item to Travers City dash sculpting. All lowercase, just separated by dashes. Hit save and close. Now, 
if I'm in Google, and let's say, for instance, I'm flipping through the Google listings, and I click on the link that links to this page right here, it's going to go to an error page, as we're about to find out, because the menu item has, or because the URL has changed. So I go ahead and do that. My error page has been generated. Now I'm going to go back in here. I'll refresh, and I can see that error being being taken into account right there. And what I want to do is I want to make it so this error actually this this gets redirected this page to the correct page. All the traffic from now on will get moved to the correct page. So let's go ahead and we'll go to the correct page here. I can just go back to the home page and follow the correct path to get there. Classes, sculpting. See, we've got Traverse City sculpting. And here in my redirect manager, I'm going to click on the error that was produced and enter the destination URL. That would be just the correct place. And you need to enable it. Save and close. And now, if somebody tries to get to that old listing, or that old Google listing that has the incorrect path, see it just got redirected. You probably didn't see that. Watch the top here. Ready? I'm going to hit enter. And it redirects it. It's important to do this if you're making any changes that, uh, that affect the URL structure, or even um, if you're moving from, you know, if you're moving your uh, site from Joomla 1.5 to 2.5, anytime these URLs are going to be affected, you want Joomla or you want Google to know about the new uh, the new path. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to the next item here. Okay, let's take a look at the the um, the listings themselves and how they're composed. Um, of course, you probably know this, but here we have the page title. Here we have the page description down here. Sorry, it's kind of hard to highlight these things. Page description down here. Of course, we have the URL. Um, some sites you'll notice have what are called site links. Uh, we'll go to cloudaccess.net, and uh, here you can see site links. I'm going to show you um, the basics behind these these items. Um, okay, so here we're going to look at our. We're going to, of course, use this as an example. Um, you can see at the top here, Art Gallery Home. This is the current page title for our home page, which is possibly the most important page title. Um, I'm going to go back and show you exactly where that's uh, generated from. I'm going to go back to the main menu. I believe I'm actually already there, Art Gallery Home. Click on it. And here we get to decide what we want our page title to be. Right now, it's just taking the menu item title. So let's see your fine art gallery in Traverse City. Actually, I think let's do it on a sub page. I'd rather uh, we're going to do it. We'll stick with these drawing and sculpting ones just because we're working on those. So we're going to go to oops, page display options. Browser page title, and this one we were doing um, fine art drawing in Traverse City. Okay, Hit save and close, and you can see my page title has changed to fine art drawing. Before it would have just taken the um, uh, taken the browser or the uh, the article title. Um, but now it's actually, we, we've stipulated that it's supposed to use that. And we can actually take a look at the source and view that. All right, yeah, we've got title right there. Now let's go, you can see that the, uh, uh, the description isn't actually being generated. So let's go and take a look at that. Oops. Close out of the redirect manager, we don't need that anymore. I'm going to go into that specific article, figure out which one it is here. What I'm doing is I'm turning the page titles to show the title back on, because I'm not sure exactly what this article is titled here. Daily Drawing Classes, okay. I'm going to turn it off here. Okay, so we're going to go into the Daily Drawing Classes article. 
All right. We have this metadata options down at the bottom. Um, you know, the, key, the description is pretty darn important. The keywords aren't so much, but you could potentially fill those out just to be thorough. Uh, for, the, for the description, we're going to want to reflect the title of the article um, and just kind of expound on that a little bit. So let's say um, we offer daily drawing classes um, in the Traverse City area. Stop by today for a free lesson. All right. So now, when somebody searches, let's say, daily drawing, Traverse City, or no, drawing classes, Traverse City, probably nothing really important is going to come up, and I don't think it would be difficult to rank very high for this particular keyword, but it's, it's probably not searched that often either. So uh, classes, Traverse City. So what we would see here, assuming our, our article was able to get to the top or even remotely close to the top, you would see our page description and then, or sorry, our, our um, meta description right down here and you'd see our page title right on the top. So it's kind of hard to highlight those, but you get the point. And of course, if we look at the source, I can refresh this. And now we see our meta description right here as well. Again, you can do the keywords. It's it's really, I don't believe it's, it's um, taken into account that much, but uh, it might be worth doing. Okay, um, so now we have this site, and we have determined um, what the most, you know, optimal URLs are. We have gone through and we've put in our, um, put in our H1, H2 tags. Uh, let's do a little bit of interlinking just to give you an idea. Um, from the home page here, I want this text right here to say we offer daily drawing classes. That's actually going to really help in terms of getting traffic and, and getting um, more um, importance put on this drawing page right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go edit that main page content. Go back to welcome to, and we need to change this to welcome to fine art gallery. Okay, so here we have visit I wrote the twice. Uh, okay, visit the art gallery district to have a good time. Check out our daily drawing classes. And here I'm just going to link this. And I'll just click the link button. And you may not notice, but you can actually just search for your articles right here. Uh, so we're going to do drawing. Daily drawing classes, there it is. I click on that. And of course, we want this to open in the current page, but you can always open in a new page if you wanted. Insert that link. What we're doing here is um, uh, making it not only so people can just click on that and go, but Google, when they scan this page, they're going to see that and they're actually going to say, oh, well, this other page is really about daily drawing classes. Um, now, that's one way of just linking to the page, but let's say, for instance, um, within our daily drawing classes, we have a daily drawing class schedule. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to go back into our daily drawing classes article. And we'll go like this. Sorry guys, my mouse is kind of doing some funny things here. Okay. And All right, what we're going to do is we're going to link to this specific spot on the page, and anchor links are actually an important part of SEO. Um, this is just the fundamental, the basics behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little insert, insert edit anchor tag, and we want this anchor tag to be called uh, daily classes. Click insert. You'll see a little anchor show up there. Pretty nifty. Okay. Now we're going to go back to our other article. You could potentially have these open in two different tabs and, and make it go a bit faster, but we'll go back to this. So we've got check out our daily drawing classes. Um, uh, we could say our daily drawing class schedule. 
And I'm just going to highlight this whole thing again. Oops. We're going to just remove the link just to make sure we're starting with a clean. Uh, unless you plan on looking at the code, these editors tend to put a whole bunch of extra stuff in there. So um, I guess uh, there's really sometimes no way of, no way of getting around looking at the code. Um, but but in the interest of just making sure everything's clean, I would go and remove links, remove tags, and then re-tag and re-link it just to make sure it removes it all. So we click on the insert, insert edit link. And actually down at the bottom here, oops, so let's say daily. Oh no, we want drawing. And here's our daily drawing classes. Oh, okay. And then it should pop up and show me um, the anchors that I can use within this, but it doesn't seem to do that. Um, so I'll just manually add the anchor. Um, going to have to remember exactly what I had written there. But what you're going to want to do is put the pound signal, the pound sign, and then I think I called it daily drawing. Bernie, did I call it daily drawing? Do you recall? Yeah, Bernie, Bernie's I'm, out there I'm, somewhere. Yeah, I'm sorry. What did you say? Oh, did I did I call the the anchor tag daily drawing? I, I honestly don't remember. I don't want to get out of this. I you know, um, can, I'm not. I can't remember. Out. That's okay, bud. All right, so I'm just going to refresh the page here, and I can go down, and um, I should be able to look at the source and, and take a look. Um, scroll down here. This all looks like a pretty big mess here. Okay, daily classes is what I called it. All right. Okay, and we're going to go back here and go to the end here, and I called it daily classes. That is just manually inserting an anchor tag. But actually, what you should be able to do, um, just try it here. You should be able to, uh, within the link, select anchors, and I believe this actually only works within articles. So let's say, for instance, the uh, the specific spot in this article that I wanted to link to was down farther as opposed to being in another article. That's when this would load the specific um, anchors that are available. Anyways, okay, so go ahead and save and close. All right, so go back to the home page here. And now we have our daily drawing class, which, as you can see, links to the middle of this article. Go back, and I'll show you again. Go ahead and click on this. So interlinking within your articles is an important part of SEO. You, you have to um, try to direct, not only direct your site visitors correctly, make sure that they can navigate your site um, you know, intuitively, but you also want to tell search engines, you know, this spot on this other article is about daily drawing class schedule. And of course, it's actually linking to here, but it, the, the browser can't go far enough down the page, so, uh, so we'll just live with that. Okay, um, so we've got this site, and we have successfully created, um, you know, our, our titles, our, um, our descriptions, we've gone through our text, and, um, and put our keywords into the, the uh, heading tags. Um, now what we want to do is we want to go through and tell Google, you know, um, and Bing too. When I say Google, I mean all major search engines. I don't want to leave Bing out, poor guy. Uh, uh, what we want to do is we want to tell Bing and Google where our pages are. We need to submit a site map. Um, now there are a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, you can go to uh, a tool that will just basically create a sitemap for you. I'm going to go to Google and just say uh, sitemap tool. Whoops. Yeah. Sitemap tool. There we go. And XML sitemap generator. This is a popular one. All I do is I just put my URL in there. And a few settings. Usually just leave these the same. Uh, and then click start. And what this is doing is just scanning the, um, the different links on the pages and basically it follows every link to come up with a map of your site and you download an XML um, uh, XML file that is your site map. Here you can see it right here. This is a site map. 
Um, now, a lot of people think sitemaps are something that have to be visible on the page where it shows all the links. Not necessarily true. In fact, you, you see most sites don't have those anymore. We don't have one at cloudaccess.net. What we do have, though, is an XML file that tells Google where all of our URLs are. Now, the problem with using an XML sitemap generator like this is, let's say next week we go and we change um, and we decide, well, you know, fine art wasn't good enough. We're ranking better, but we want to do um, fine Michigan art. And we change our URL within the site. That This sitemap is not automatically going to change. So um, what, we, what people typically do is they would go and use a sitemap generator tool that is an extension within Joomla that basically just keeps your sitemap up to date all the time. Um, I'm going to, let me just dig through my extensions here and see if I can find a, a version of a popular one called um, uh, XMAP. I believe I have one. Just give me one moment here. And don't believe I do. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just go download one. I, if you look on the um, the SEO step-by-step -step SEO document that I have the checklist, I actually have a link to the XMAP uh, sitemap generator here. Let's take a look. Yep, XMAP right there. And this takes me to the extensions directory. I'll go ahead and download. Hopefully, it's not going to make me register for anything. But nope. Okay, so here we have uh, different sitemaps. We're going to go ahead and take the one for Joomla 2.5 or newer. And Joomla extensions 2.5, save. OK. Now what I'm going to do is just go and plug that sitemap generator into the site. Hopefully you're familiar with uploading extension at this point, but I will go ahead and uh, give you a brief tutorial on that too. Extension manager, I'm going to go choose the file. Extensions, 2.5, XMAP, and we'll upload, and voila, it's the beauty of uh, having a Joomla site. So now I have this new extension down here. I'm going to go ahead and click on XMAP, and you have to excuse me, I haven't created uh, a sitemap within XMAP for a long time, so uh, I'm going to have to kind of toy around here, but I believe you just click New, you give it a name. Um, art, uh, let's see if we don't even have to, I don't think this uh, really has anything to do with um, SEO, but we're going to call this fine art sitemap. And we want status published, public. Uh, we want it to dig through our main menu. And we want it to dig. We'll just leave all these by default. And we don't necessarily need it to dig through our user menu because I don't think the user menu is, is meant for, we'll go back, back home here. and um, Yeah, user menu has like create an account, access your account, edit your account. We don't need that stuff. So uh, we're just going to leave, leave it so it doesn't choose those. Flip through the options. Um, you can probably just leave all this the same as well. So I'll go ahead, save and close. And it has just created a sitemap for us. Um, I can actually go and view that sitemap by clicking here, I believe. Yep. So you can see we have not very many pages on our site, but this will automatically change these when we change the URLs on our site. And if we add new pages, it will add that stuff in. So now you ask yourself, what do you do with this sitemap? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give it to Google and Bing and, and say, here you go, here are the pages on my site. Um, they, of course, they will probably find these pages by indexing and crawling your site anyways, but ultimately this is just being thorough and, um, and, and that's what they want you to do. You know, Google says jump, we all say how high. Um, so uh, uh, let's go back to our checklist here. And after we have created a sitemap, I give you a link to uh, Google Webmaster Tools and Big Web, Bing Webmaster Tools. I'll just go to, um, here we'll go to Google Webmaster Tools. I'm going to have to do this in a uh, new browser actually because I already have a session open with Webmaster Tools that I don't want to uh, close down. So um, go through the process of creating a new account actually.
And let's see, I don't even think. You know, the problem is with Google is they integrate all your different accounts. Um, I'm afraid to actually create a new Webmaster Tools accounts for, for everybody simply because it may try to connect that to all my current existing stuff and, and uh, that will cause problems. But I'll tell you what I can do is just give you a description of what you're going to do and I can even show you screenshots of site, uh, or Webmaster Tools. Just go to Images. And that's not a very big image. I'll try to find a bigger one. There we go. Okay, so go to the links that I provided and sign up for a Google and Bing Webmaster Tools account. Um, once you log in, you're going to have to set up your site. Basically, you have to tell them, I own this site and you have to prove it to them. The first thing they're going to ask you to do is to um, uh, validate your site. There are a few different ways to do this. Um, one that I would recommend that's really easy is they will provide a simple HTML file. It's a file that you'll download and all they want you to do is just place that file up on the web server. Um, hopefully at this point you, you're able to access FTP um, if not, I will, uh, I, if you want to check back on our SEO document down here, I'm going to provide information on how to validate your account. Um, it's an important step and, um, and it's not overly complex, but it's one of the more complex things to do. But essentially, you take the file that they provide you, it's just a simple HTML file, and you upload it to the root folder of your site, that would be where your Joomla site is located. Uh, in, in our case, it's the HTTP docs folder. And uh, from there, you click on a validate button and they will see that file there. And they say, yes, this guy does own this site. Guy or girl does own this site. And, um, and they will allow you to administrate it. Once you log in, you're going to see a number of different uh, links on the, the side here. Um, site configuration is the one where you upload your site map. Uh, all you're going to do is click on the site configuration and there's a button that says submit sitemap. Once you, once you get to that spot, they're going to ask you for the URL of your sitemap. That's where this comes into play. Here I'm just going to click on this XML sitemap as I did before and this gives me a link directly to my sitemap. So you want to provide this same link to them and ultimately they will use that from then from that second on they'll use that to determine what links you have in your site I guess also they'll use the the crawlers that they have to to figure out what links they have but um, again that's how you add the sitemap to Google and Bing all right um, so th those are the main things we just covered um, a couple other things that I want to go over that are a little bit um, you know on the side um, Google Bing they, they all take into account um, load time and this is kind of a big, um, a big boo-boo that people usually do is they'll go and they will upload images to their site that are way too big and ultimately aren't labeled correctly. And this is actually a big portion of it. Um, uh, I know a lot of people, uh, personally, you notice that I just went and used Google Images. Um, I, I, I don't personally know, but I've, I've read on forums a lot of people that get a lot of traffic from basically just the images that they have on Google Images. Um, for that reason alone, you may want to go through and make sure that you have the correct uh, tags on your images. So let's go, uh, let's go take a look at that. Um, you can link, you can, you can see here I link to the uh, image optimization article. Um, images of course have alt tags, file names, image size. Um, when you're adding the image, alt tag is not the most important thing. Um, but when somebody's on your site, and let's say for instance they're on a device that doesn't show images, when they hover over this, um, when, when it doesn't show images, they'll actually see your alt tag. When they hover the mouse over it, they see the alt tag. Uh, so it's important also for, for blind people that, that go and, and um, uh, browse the internet. Um, this, is, this is an important tag for them as well. 
Um, file name. Now, you're not going to see a lot of people say that this is a huge important thing, but in the interest of just best practice, you know, it's always best to try to be descriptive when naming the file. Um, for instance, if, if I've got my home page, there's a picture of my studio. I wish. That looks pretty sweet. Um, I'm probably, let's go ahead and just see what this is named, see how well Bernie did when creating this site. Go ahead and check it out. He did pretty well. He called this image art artgallery.jpg. Um, you know, uh, I would. You could even go so far as to say Art Gallery Traverse City. I, that probably would be considered keyword stuffing. But, um, uh, but those things, however small, are taken into account when you know search engines list your site. Um, you checking my work, John? A little bit. Yeah, you're doing pretty well. You're doing pretty well. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, ultimately. Uh, another major problem uh, that, that we see is people will go and they'll insert this picture into the article, but they'll do it, uh, they'll take the picture that they took with their 10 megapixel digital camera and insert it in there and then just resize it. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to right click, click on this again and, and look at the image. As you can see, this image is the same size when I look at the full image. So we can tell right away that Bernie did a good job here and he did not put a, uh, a gigantic image in there and then just make it look smaller in a browser. Um, you know, this, this goes down, uh, I'm not going to get too far into um, mobile SEO, but, uh, but being able, having a fast load time for mobile is a big deal. Of course, people, not everybody has 4G. In fact, we, we don't have it here in Traverse City yet. And um, uh, ultimately, when, when I'm on 3G and I come onto a site that takes you know, 10 seconds to load, um, odds are I'm not going to find that site in Google. Google's not going to show me a site when I'm searching that it knows that I can't load. You know, if, if the site is um, 10 megabytes, then, uh, or sorry, not 10 megabytes, takes 10 seconds, is you know, 2 or 3 megabytes uh, page size, it's a bad thing. Um, speaking of page size and load time, just while we're on that subject, I think we're, we're, we're good on image optimization, main points, use alt tags, use you know, descriptive file names whenever, whenever possible, and try to keep the images of a proper size. Um, I'm going to jump in real fast to uh, page load time because that's an important point. Um, I'm going to show you a secret tool here that is not really much of a secret. It's called Pingdom Tools. Uh, I will, if I didn't already, let's see here. I did not add a link to Pingdom Tools, and I will put it on there as soon as we're done here. Uh, Pingdom Tools is a, a tool that allows you to see how long your site is taking to load. It gives it a rating in terms of um, uh, speed and in terms of, um, it also shows you what's loading when, when your site's going. Let's go ahead and just pop our art gallery site in there and see what happens. All right. So go ahead and enter that in, hit test now. Whoa, 6.5 megabytes. Bernie, you're in trouble. Bernie is in big trouble. What I do? Yeah, look at the page size you got here. 6.5 hmm. megabytes is a completely unreasonable page size for a Joomla site. Um, I'm I'm wondering you know, if it's my background image. You know what? I, I haven't shown them that yet, but uh, you're you're on the right track. Um, you know, okay. So we're going to go through these numbers just briefly. A performance grade of 83 is great. Really, anything over 70 is pretty darn good. Um, this is based on, I believe, all sites on the internet. So um, you know, if you're in the top 50, you're great. Uh, it's not like you know, A plus, B minus. You know, I, I don't have a B minus here. I've got more of an A minus. Um, requests. Um, requests are these are HTTP requests. It's how many times my browser has to go out to the web server and grab information from my site. And essentially, um, every time I load, let's say, a new, uh, a new image or CSS file, that's going to be a new request for that image or CSS file or whatever it may be. Uh, 46 is pretty good. You know, you, you want to keep probably below 60 or so. I, you know, I'm probably going to get people um, yelling at me for even saying that. But um, uh, a load time of 3.5 seconds is slow comparatively. Not, not terribly slow, but um, ultimately that's because we have this 6.5 megabyte 
page size, every time somebody loads this page, they're loading 6.5 megabytes, assuming that they don't have the images cached. Um, so let's scroll down a little bit. Let's find out what's wrong with this. Um, here we have the general. Um, it actually shows you uh, connect time, send time, wait time. Uh, the servers at cloudaccess.net are configured to run Joomla very efficiently. And you take an efficient site, and it's going to load immediately. We're go we actually have people that regularly migrate from you know, other hosting providers and tell us that their site loads consider considerably faster. But you can't take a site like this and expect it to load you know, as fast because we're dealing with such a high page size. So I'm going to scroll down here. And we see, you know, it starts by loading, um, it loads the, the, uh, the main content there, and then it's going to go through and it's going to load the CSS files, load some JavaScript. Um, you know, we could potentially combine JavaScript files here and save a few HTTP requests, but not going to worry about that. This isn't really bad. I'm going to scroll down here and I see that 5.9 megabytes, that is like 90% of our page uh, load time here, our, our page size, is from this particular uh, image. In fact, you can see it took 1.68 seconds just to receive this file. You can imagine if you're in a, a mobile browser, um, it's going to be a big problem. You know, you have somebody sitting there waiting for your background to load. Um, I hate to say it, but shame on Bernie for, for, for putting an image this big in there, and, and I think that we should probably fix that. I put so, it in there to see if you'd catch it, John. <laughs> okay. I applaud, I applaud your efforts. Great job. <laughs> Okay, now let's keep scrolling down. We see that all these other images are relatively um, uh, relatively small. Uh, we have one here, the art banners. This would, these would be the banners in the um, heading here. You can see these. I don't know, if, if you happen to have image software, image editing software, there are ways to make uh, JPEGs like this. Just compress them a little bit. Ultimately, the uh, the the the, um, the resolution or the the detail in these images may be slightly too much for web content. Web content is not really HD, and there's no reason to have. You could probably get these to you know maybe not half their size, but um, that would be a little bit nitpicky. But ultimately, going through this, um, I can definitely see a significant improvement to be had here, and. Um, I'd be curious to go resize that stuff, but but in the interest of uh, of moving forward, we're going to just expect that Bernie will fix that in the future. So. Hey, I will. You know what? One quick question: uh, When sure. should you use a, a PNG or a JPEG uh, um, or a GIF? Or GIF. Good question. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's talk about transparencies. Um, one thing that people try to do this this image right here, this this um, art logo is obviously it's just a box. Most logos actually, you know, they have some sort of, let's go ahead and look at cloudaccess.net. If I look at cloudaccess.net, um, that's kind of a bad example too because we're on a white background. But if we were on a black background here, you wouldn't necessarily want to see a big white box around cloudaccess.net. So in this instance, a JPG would not be a good uh, option because JPGs don't handle transparency. They can't do it. GIFs and PNGs are capable of that. Now, a GIF is meant, and, and um, you know, I, I guess uh, there are various technical reasons for this, but a GIF is not meant for something that has a lot of detail. For instance, it doesn't do very well on images like our uh, headings here. We wouldn't want to use a GIF here. We'd want to use either a JPEG or a PNG. Um, ultimately, I think, and I you guys could probably correct me um, here, but I believe that JPEGs can offer a lower file size when you're um, when you're looking at these. But it also depends on the quality of the image. Um, so uh, GIFs are actually better used for things like uh, we probably don't have this. Actually, this logo would not be a bad uh, candidate for a GIF. You could probably get a smaller file size with a GIF here. Maybe it's got a little detail, but ultimately not a lot of different colors. Um, let's take a look at uh, the Cloud Access site. This is a bit better example here. I'm going to go to the home page. And um, for instance, here, these images here, I would say, are probably too detailed for GIFs. But um, 
Gosh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, these these images up here, these little Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, those are good candidates for GIF images. Uh, they they are not a lot of colors, not a lot of details, and a GIF uh, it has to do with how how the image is mapped. You can imagine, you know, a, a couple hundred pixels there, and how each pixel is colored and uh, the orientation of them. That's the difference between GIF, JPEG, and PNG. Ultimately, JPEG and PNG are the ones for better quality. Um, if you need a transparency and good quality, use a PNG. If you need a transparency and not so good quality, use a GIF. You'll get a smaller file size. Um, if you uh, if you're just putting up photos off of your your um, your you know camera, use a uh, a JPEG. Uh, that that works just fine. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so let's jump back here, and we can hop back in our um, our checklist here and see where we're at. Okay, inbound links. Um, one of the major, major, and I apologize for having such a small section here on such an important topic, but uh, one of the major aspects of how you rank in search engines is um, how many links are going to your site, the popularity of your site. And also, it has a lot to do with with what type of links they are. You know, whether they're um, uh, whether they're uh, anchor text coming from some you know uh, really really big site out there that has holds a lot of pulls a lot of weight in the internet, or maybe it's another small art gallery that's down the seat down the street. Ultimately, they all help, um, uh, with a few uh, exceptions. They have uh, links that are specific that that are no follow links that don't count basically, but um, but. The idea is try to get links in every way, shape, or form, and um, do it on a fairly natural basis. Um, if you're an art gallery, uh, we'll just go from the standpoint of an art gallery, and I'll, I'll use a few examples. Uh, excuse me, I'll like grab a glass of water. Here. Okay, um, if you're an art gallery, odds are I'm getting my my material from, uh, let's say, my frames, my canvas. Maybe I have uh, a bunch of different, like Jackson Pollock, if, if um, I don't believe he's still alive, but uh, um, if he was an artist friend of mine, um, I would probably first go and talk to other people that I know that have websites. Of course, having websites in my industry helps even more, um, but uh, try to connect links with them. Uh, I don't know that a, a, a link from, a, let's say, telecommunications company would help in terms of uh, getting my popularity up with this site. Um, and, and so I would say go and talk to, if I was in an art gallery position, go and talk to my artist friends, try to get links from their websites. I think even more importantly that, than that, and you probably would require quite a bit of pressure, but I would um, talk to my manufa the, the manufacturers of the frames, of the, um, the material that I use, and say, hey, I'm a valued customer of yours, and um, this may require calling them. It may require uh, getting in touch with their web developers. Um, but say, you know, I, I'd like to have a link from uh, your site to mine. And basically, um, there, there is difference here between inbound and outbound links. Um, you know, a link exchange would be, uh, I, I've got my friend Jackson Pollock here that that um, you know that that I show his art in my art gallery. Um, if he has a website, and we say, okay, let's link to each other's site. Ultimately, there is more worth to me if I don't link back to him. So if he just has a link to my site and I don't link back, I'm in better shape than he is there. Uh, and and so basically contact your manufacturers or the people that uh, you work with maybe you maybe you um, have people in your industry that, that you know of you have connections um, it's difficult I can say from a small business standpoint getting links especially links that are of importance um, it can can be daunting um, there are link farming services out there or, or services where you go and you, you purchase a series of links or people go out there and try to, um, you know, you, you purchase an email campaign from, from some um, people that just do that uh, as a full-time job. Uh, the fact is Google and Bing, they're pretty good about recognizing the uh, getting natural links versus people that are farming these things out. And you can get in trouble 
um, with that. So I guess I'd recommend against having people, um, you know, you can have people do this for you if you have somebody in your workplace that, that um, you know, is good on uh, with email and on the phone, maybe send out a few emails a day and just say, hey, keep pressuring people, say, hey, I don't see you have a link to my site yet, um, all that stuff. Um, another thing you want to do um, is, is, go, is try to make it easy for people to link to your site. Let's say, for instance, we go back to my art classes and I've got this drawing schedule down at the bottom here, which I probably should have put an H2 tag on. Um, okay, let's say I want to offer a link to this. Let's say, you know, people may want to know when is this class scheduled, and they may want to present that on their, on their own site. You know, say, hey, check out this other art gallery's daily drawing class. So what I did here in the inbound links section here is I gave you just a brief example of just constructing a, a, sing, uh, a link. And this wouldn't be something that you would actually put into the HTML. It's something you want to code to the point where the person can see it. I'll just go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to put it into the article. Probably lost my session here, of course. Yeah, hold on one sec. All right. So I've got to go back to the article manager and daily drawing classes. Do a couple things here. We want to make this uh, H2. Okay. And at the bottom here, I'm going to say, um, uh, want to link to my daily drawing class or daily drawing class schedule. Oops. If I could spell correctly, sorry. Uh, copy this text, and I'll just paste this in here, and we'll go ahead and get a link to this specific. I can actually go back to my home page and even use, I'm going to copy this link that I created before. If you take a look right down at the bottom of the page when I hover over it, um, you can see that it has the pound sign and then daily classes at the end of it. That links to the anchor tag right on that page. So I'm going to paste that link right here. So here we've got our webinar site, or sorry, our fine art site, uh, the URL, and then to the specific spot on this page. And then the anchor text. We're going to say daily, we want to even use Traverse City in here. Um, See so your daily drawing classes in Traverse City. Okay. Looks good. Go ahead and save it. And okay, so now I'm looking at this article that we've got here. And I didn't really format this very well. It should be much easier for the person to copy. But Ultimately, this link right here, if this is something, this is something you would want to provide to the, the site visitors or even in emails going out to people that are, you're requesting links from, say, hey, it's real easy. You could even just pop this into your website. The link is ready to go. I've got my, my uh, anchor text right here. And the people, it makes it real easy for them to link back. And, and the fact is, nobody's going to link to your site if, you know, um, if, if, number one, they don't know how to do it. You've got a lot of people out there that, you know, they administrate their site, and they're not going to necessarily log in and, and link to your site unless you make it easy for them. So I would recommend doing something like that. You could even have a module on the side. There are even tools that allow you um, extensions that, that, that make it easy to link to any page on the site. Uh, so that's that's one thing. Again, use this in emails as well. So the, the general construction of that is in the SEO checklist right there. Um, okay, so uh, um, inbound links that basically try to get as many of them as possible. That's that's the main thing, and I know it's not easy. Um, one thing that actually uh, an important um, tool to show you here, I'm just going to go to yahoo.com or Bing or Google. It all works the same. I'm going to go and look at I can, there's some ways that you can tell the links that are going to your site. They're not 100% accurate, but they are relatively accurate. Uh, I'm going to type in site, colon, and then we'll just go cloudaccess.net. Hit enter. Now, this is actually a bad example because we happen to have a whole boatload of uh, 
uh, subdomains. And subdomains really don't necessarily count. So let's use another one. Let's say, uh, what was one of those art galleries here? Seedstudio.com, Seed Studio Gallery. Uh, I'll go back here and paste that in. And this is a pretty cool way. You can just go and I can see. Yeah, there. Gosh, I'm sorry, I completely misdirected everybody. Site is how you see all the pages on your site according to that search engine. We want link colon and then we've got the URL. I'll go ahead and hit search. And unfortunately what we're seeing here is that this site does not necessarily have any links going to them. Now I've noticed and it's pretty um, common knowledge that uh, these search engines don't necessarily show you all links or even in this case any links. Um, I, I went to Yahoo specifically because I always thought that they were a they showed a little bit more. They were a little bit more honest about it, but um, but we can try Google and see if uh, see if that site has any links to it. Okay, so here, um, new exhibit, song, strung odors. I'm not sure exactly what this is, and I'm afraid to click on it. But according to this um, uh, result right here, our fine art seed studio gallery it actually has a link from this particular website. We're going to go ahead and click on it. Small children beware. Okay, this isn't so bad. Yeah, so this is actually linking to, and you can see here, um, they've got it right here. That's the link that's going to the site. So ultimately, it could be potentially a, um, a one-way link as well. So this site, our fine, uh, sorry, Seed Studio, is benefiting from a one-way link from this site and we can tell that by using this little code here. Now you can get, there are other ways to see what links are going to your site and there are better ways. Um, you know, uh, going into Webmaster Tools, having analytics set up, but this is a very simple way just to check it out. All right. Okay, so um, we have uh, one final thing here that I just want to rip through. Uh, local business listings. This is a very important um, topic. Um, when you're marketing locally, uh, you want to you want to show up on the. Let's just go ahead and do art, art studio, Traverse City. Get some local business listings here, and. Let's go um, hair shop. I don't even know what I. Okay, salon. Okay, so we have the local business listings here. Um, ultimately, these are search results in themselves. They are not the organic listings. They do happen to. Um, uh, they do happen to kind of follow suit. If if you have a high ranking here in your organic listings, you will rank higher here for the most part. Um, but for the most part, you, you, you want to go through and you want to build these listings up just the same way you do your, your organic listings. You want to go and you want to get links to your site, of course, but you also want to go out and get not only your Google listings set up, but you want to get listings set up in other local business directories. Um, I've provided in the link here just a little um, oh, listing, uh, a, a, a link to our tutorial here. Right down at the bottom, here's a good list of local listing sites. Uh, this may be a bit outdated, but what I would recommend doing is just starting from the top and going down and definitely use a spam email. You know, if you have an email address specifically, um, you know, to keep your spammy uh, signups, uh, use those. But um, go down this list and sign up for every free one you can. And some of them, not all, are free. And actually, I believe if I were you, I would stay away from. Uh, do I see Yelp in there? Stay away from Yelp. I think that uh, they're kind of a scam. Um, and there are probably other little scam ones in here too, but just sign up for as many as you can. And some of them require you to validate your listing. Uh, they may give you a phone call and you know an automated message saying, please enter the four-digit code, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these are great inbound links, and they provide, um, uh, they make it so your your local listing, I don't even know where they went here, they make it so your Google local listing and your Bing local listing show up more prominently. Um, reviews are another thing, get natural reviews. Uh, you can ask for reviews, don't, I wouldn't necessarily do it on your site, but, um, but uh, try to, you know, 
request people to review or offer them discounts if they, uh, you know, if they if they go and and, si and sign in and actually give you a positive review. So, in short, that was the two-minute local listing um, uh, uh, webinar. Anyways, okay, we have a whole lot of questions, Bernie. Help me out here. Yes, yes, we do. Sorry, let me uh, let me get back here. A lot of compliments too, though. A lot oh, of people great. saying thanks. Yeah. Um, Lamini, I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly. And John, if you know, there are a lot of questions. If we get to some redundancies, just point it out. I'm kind of learning as well. So. Okay. Uh, Lamini says, is it better to use template overrides to make articles show up as H1 titles? I believe you covered that one. Um, yes. What you want to do to make the um, make the H1 show up. You see, for example, this article right here, we've got our daily drawing class schedule. And let me just go ahead and get to that. Okay, so you can see we don't have an H1 here. I could go into the article options and show and hide this. What I did is I shut the title off globally. We don't want the title to show up on any pages. And I'm going to put my own title in here, you know, um, uh, art drawing in Traverse City and then set that as an H1. So in in short, yes, just go ahead and add your add all that stuff within the article. I hope that answers the question. Here, Bernie, I actually can see this list of questions here. We can jump through if you want to pose them. Did I lose Bernie? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Oh, that's okay. Um, Lemini asks, what I don't like about Joomla is that the text to HTML ratio is low, too low. What's the best way to make that ratio high? Text to HTML ratio. Um, well, ultimately you can control, within your articles, you can control exactly what HTML it produces. Um, if she's referring to, let's say, for instance, let's look at the source on um, on our fine art drawing page here. Go ahead and refresh so we can see our title tag. So I'm going to view page source here. Um, that's all pretty wildly laid out there. Um, here is the inside of my article. And we've got uh, a lot of other stuff that's loaded here, um, a lot of modules. Ultimately, the amount of HTML that's produced for the entire page is largely based on the template that you choose. Um, so I would recommend choose high quality templates. Uh, there are a lot of junky templates out there, uh, especially free ones. Um, Cloudbase is great. Um, but, but basically we want to go with, um, you want to go with high quality templates and you can control 100% what shows up within the article. What shows up outside of the article, you know, your menu and stuff, you could go with a simpler menu. We have a menu that actually uses JavaScript, um, loads external files. Uh, so that you have less control over, but ultimately you have full control over it because you can choose the template that you're using. Okay. Very good. Uh, Fred says, are you supposed to do the keyword search for every page on your site? I think redundancy is important, right, being as thorough as possible. Yeah, our keyword research, we came up with four main keywords that described our site. Of course, this is uh, not a very accurate list. If we were going through and doing keyword research on um, an art gallery site, we'd probably want to list every medium out there, you know, pastels um, and, um, you know, uh, watercolors. And then what we'd want to do is probably have a specific page for each one of these. So I wouldn't necessarily um, do the keyword for keyword research for every page. It really depends. It depends on the the niche that you're in. But um, but basically, come up with a list of general keywords that you know you want to rank for, that most of your traffic is going to come from, and then basically kind of develop your content around that. Ultimately, if you're being natural about it um, and, and just, you know, writing your content naturally and your pages are about what, you know, the main keywords are, then, uh, then you want to, uh, yeah, use, use these keywords in, in each of the articles in a natural form. But, no, you probably don't need to do keyword research for every single article. But you can get as thorough as you want on this. Um, there are people out there that will go and 
they could tell you, you know, right off the bat how many, what the keyword density or percentage within all the words fine art is located within this particular page. And that is uh, actually how the, the algorithms, the major search engines, um, how their algorithms determine the importance of a specific page within a search engine result uh, is the keyword density among other things. So, um, so I can't tell you the magic numbers of keyword density and what pages you have it on, but ultimately I can say be natural. Um, one thing, just while we're on this, uh, everybody should know this, and I believe it was mentioned in the last SEO webinar. Um, go type in um, uh, Matt Cutts blog, M-A-T-T-C-U-T-T-S. Uh, Matt Cutts uh, does YouTube, his, the YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel, sorry, um, has tons and tons of great information, and he kind of goes into, you know, do's and don'ts, um, similar to what I'm doing. There are a lot of SEO experts out there that you know that basically just follow his rules. That's all. So, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, I answer that right. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, a lot of our attendees are asking if this is going to be available in the future of the recording. We are recording this. This will be published to youtube.com forward slash cloud access. John, if you wouldn't mind showing them our YouTube channel. Sure thing. Yeah. It will be available if everybody watching goes and likes us on Facebook right now. Yeah. And actually, you can have them like our webinars page. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, cloud two. access. YouTube.com forward slash cloud access. And you can see a lot of, uh, we have our previous search engine optimization um, webinar here that was done by uh, my coworker, Gary Brooks, and Bernie's coworker. And um, that's a great one to watch as well. So I would check that out. But ultimately, you should be able to get to this video by going to our site, go to training, Joomla webinars, and what we're going to have here, right now you see this Joomla SEO step-by-step -step tutorial, but you'll see a link here that just says something along the lines of specialty webinars, and then you'll see this specific webinar, and we'll put a recording of it right there. So you can go to our YouTube channel, or you can go to it in the site. Excellent. Dean says, according to Firebug, my Utheme template article titles are already H1, so is there a need to turn off the titles? No, no, ultimately not. Um, in fact, if you turn off the titles and then go into your articles and add those titles back in, it's going to look identical. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's funny because um, we actually use Utheme template on our main site here. We just changed it out. And it, by default, is putting H2. So it really depends on the template and how that's laid out. All right. And um, what went in the anchor text box? This is from Victoria. What went in the anchor text box, the keyword? Um, what you want to do is, we'll go back to our example page here if I can pull it up. Um, there, you site. Okay, so let's go back into our drawing classes. Actually, no, we, sorry, we wanted to go to the home page. That's where we made the anchor text link. Um, let's say, for instance, uh, you know, we wanted to rank for drawing classes in Traverse City. Um, and we want to, off of the home page here, we're creating a link to that sub page, which has all the drawing classes in Traverse City content on it. We created a link here that goes to it. So um, I'll just remove the link and recreate it. Oops. Link, oops. Sorry, guys, my mouse is a little funky here. Okay, unlink. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the text, and this is called the anchor text. It's possibly the most important text when you're, when you're doing this. Um, and then uh, just highlight it, click the link button, and we want to search for the drawing article there. And then, as you recall, I went and I added the anchor tag onto the end of it. So that was pound sign, and then I'm going to have to refresh my memory here, daily classes. Pound sign, daily classes, and then insert. So what went in the, um, the, link bo the, the anchor tag box there is the, um, the link to the other page. Now let's just real quick go to the other page, and I'll show you how to create it on that end. Of course, you'd want to do this backwards. You want to create the anchor link first and then link to it. You can see this little thing here. Let's do another one here. Um, that was a link to the schedule. We're going to create another anchor 
uh, tag right here. Uh, so click Insert Edit Anchor, and you can literally put anything you want here, but you want it to be applicable to what your uh, what the content is. So we're going to do Traverse City Drawing Class, something like that. And so now, when I create, a, if I want to link directly to this spot, I'm just going to do the pound sign on the end of any uh, on the end of any link that goes to this page. I can do pound sign Traverse city drawing classes. That's a really long anchor, uh, uh, anchor tag. I would not probably make them that long. Um, this is borderline keyword stuffing because I'm, you know, the anchor tag really, uh, I suppose it would work, but just be mindful. Try to be natural about it. <laughs> I guess that's the only thing I could say. All right. So uh, Bill says, this is a great job. Is there a maximum number of words in the meta description? How long should it be? Good question. Very good question. Um, I, there's a lot of theories about that. Um, I'm just going to, uh, to be honest, I'm just going to do a Google search. I could tell you I believe it's 140 characters, but let me double check here. If I could spell recommended, right? Um, uh, meta description length. Let's just see what SEO Miles has to say. Uh, here, there's, this guy says uh, 160 characters. Uh, this guy says 64 for the page title. Um, uh, meta descriptions, uh, may trim case. So that's the important thing. Um, uh, the search engines may cut short anything over 150 characters. So I would say 150 is probably 150 characters is probably a good uh, uh, good amount. Okay, uh, and Jeff asks, you mention stacking on the results page. How? Stacking on the results page. S-T-A-C-K-I-N-G? Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, could you just kind of rephrase the question? I'm not exactly sure. Um, you're probably referring maybe to the, uh, the one thing I didn't cover is the site links. Maybe that's it, uh, where We've got um, here, okay, Cloud Ahoy. Not sure what that is, but um, these would be the site links. Maybe that's what he's referring to. I did not go over that, but I did mention it. Um, ultimately, this site links, they would be covered. Um, you can, you can, Google will decide its own site links. Um, it will say, you know, we see that these pages are popular. They seem to be, you know, your main pages. They'll put them up here. You can go in your webmaster tools and say, tell Google, well, I don't want certain ones. You can exclude site links, but you can't tell Google which ones to use. I'm, I'm hoping that's what he was talking about. Okay. Yeah, Jeff, let us know if, if we were able to answer that. Keith asks, when I try to get links using link bait, if I share something on Facebook to 1,200 people, and it has a returning link to it. Do I get 1,200 separate links, or is it considered one link? Because it all comes from Facebook. That's a really good question. And to be honest, I don't know the specifics about that. Um, we do have another coworker li listening in, Sarab. And uh, I'm wondering maybe he could chime in on that. Um, Sarab, is it uh, with links coming from Facebook? Um, I guess, uh, how are those counted? Uh, he's actually one of our social marketing gurus, so he might know the answer to that. I can venture a guess on that and just say that um, uh, Google does not necessarily read the pages, depending on how you have your privacy settings. They do not necessarily read your, your status updates. So links from your status updates may not be counted. Um, I think that the answer to that probably depends on the person's privacy settings. Uh, if they're, everything is set to public on their on their page, then you probably do get a, a backlink. But um, but if they uh, if they have it so only their friends can see their updates, then probably you don't get any any um, count for that. Okay. Hey, Sarab, can you hear us? Hey. Hey. Yes, I can hear you guys. Okay. So you I know, think. Uh, yeah. I mean, probably you know we can get just uh, one link. Get you know back on your site like people are following, but. There's no specific amount of numbers. Okay. All right. Gotcha. That's a good question, though. I, I'm, I'm curious, and I'm probably going to go look that up after the webinar. All right. Let me get back to some questions here. Um, let's see. Fred, does social linking back to your site help? I, can't, you, I know you commented on it, but 
Yeah. Um, I think uh, like Twitter probably helps more than Facebook. Um, again, because Facebook status updates don't necessarily um, uh, show to the public. Uh, the, yeah, the answer is definitely yes. It does help. And I would encourage it, and I would say get as many, you know, uh, links. But ultimately, uh, the value from social um, uh, links and social updates like on Facebook, uh, obviously, is it's spread out to a lot of people. Um, but in terms of search engine optimization, um, probably uh, the ones that uh, Google indexes are, are the ones that are going to be more important. Okay, John, I'm getting a lot of comments saying thank you so much. Dean says, what are the extension names that display the page links in the article? That's a really good question. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, um, I'm not aware of any specific ones that do that. I was kind of just leaning on the fact that the extensions directory has over 10,000 extensions, and any sort of little bit of functionality like that that you can think of has been pr pretty much created. So uh, you kind of caught me there. I am not entirely sure of a specific one, um, but I can almost guarantee that there's one out there. Um, let's We could do a quick search, and I could probably pull one up for you. Pretty efficient at searching uh, extensions director here. Um, OK, so they're going to be under, let's just do uh, site links. And it uh, looks like Sarab actually already came up with one. Short links. Um, OK, so this would be structure and navigation. What I would do is I would go to the structure and navigation and then the site links uh, portion. And probably there are some in here that offer that. So uh, sorry, that's, that's probably not as much help as you wanted, but, um, but ultimately, uh, there are a lot of different uh, features that offer that, but I wouldn't, you know, it almost be, that's almost part of like a, a share, um, uh, for instance, people, they can like a, like a page on Facebook, they can, they can um, you know, share it on Twitter, but um, they, they probably have within those extensions, the, the social extensions, they probably also have one that has a thing where people can copy um, the specific spot on the page or, or maybe a post's. Um, link so they can share it. Similar to when you go to like YouTube, um, we go to a specific uh, page here, pause this, and here we can go to share and it gives me the URL. I'm sure there are uh, extensions that do that as well. Um, so again, there are over 10,000 here. I, I'd venture to guess that there's one in there that does that. All right. Uh, Jessica asks, how to get the URL for images on the websites that can be used to refer to any other website so we can link to that image on the specific page location. Um, gosh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, Bernie, can you, can you try to rephrase the question a bit? Uh, or, or have it show up in a different page while still taking it from that same image. I think she, she may just want to know how to link an image to the original source. Yeah, yeah that's pretty easy to do actually. Um, uh, let's say, um, I, I, I'm not going to have Bernie admit to this, but I'm guessing he probably pulled this image off Google, which is a big no-no. I'd say people don't do it. But let's say, for instance, we wanted to link this image, uh, which is on another site. So I'm going to go to images.google.com. We'll say painting. And here we have the Mona Lisa. And I'm going to just find the specific URL to this image, which happens to be quite long. And then within this, instead of, instead of linking, I'll go ahead and just choose the image, for the file path, the URL here, instead of putting it linking to a local image, we're just going to put the full image path there. And uh, it's probably going to be all scattered and stuff because it is... Um, uh, yeah, it is uh, going to be a different different dimensions, but update there you can see the Mona Lisa. So basically, yes, you can display images from other websites in your site. However, I'd like to step back and say, don't do that. Um, you want to get the images locally. Um, I probably wouldn't pull images off of Google. That's not very good practice. Um, 
And uh, but technically speaking, yes, it's possible. We have the Mona Lisa. Yeah, you know, John, I get a lot of my images free from morgufile.com. It's a free image. Oh, I didn't even know that one. Resource, yeah. What, what's it called? More. It's morgufile. M O R G U, F I L E. G M O R G U, F oh, morgufile. Interesting. I didn't even know that's out there. Cool. Yep. Stock photos are a difficult thing to find sometimes. Yep. Uh, you can pay a lot of money on them, and this is great. Is yep. that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Sweet. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. Uh, Steve has a question. How long should it take to see actual results when doing some of these things? How long can you wait before you can see improvements take effect? That's a really good question as well. Um, it depends on where your site is at. If you're just starting out, um, you know, I would start, if, if your site is brand new, I'd start and I'd go get links from local listings, try to get links from other places. Um, Google will crawl your site more frequently and it will give more um, uh, higher rankings to more popular sites. Um, so uh, the the answer to that is probably, if you want me to just throw out random numbers, I, I couldn't tell you if they, are, um, uh, if they are exact. By any means, it really depends. But I would say that if you're just starting out, if you just launched your site, I would expect that if you go and you start a webmaster account, you could probably get it indexed in Google within a week or so or considerably less time. Uh, that means that you would actually see it when you type in, for instance, um, let's just go to Google. This is, this is an easy way to tell whether your site is indexed in a search engine. You type in site, colon, and then cloudaccess.net, or your site's URL. It will pop up, and it will show you the different pages on your site. If, um, of course, we don't have 236,000, but uh, it will show that. So uh, you can get in Google relatively quickly. Now, how fast you climb to the top of search engines for your specific keywords uh, that depends greatly on the difficulty, um, uh, the, the competition that you have for those keywords. Uh, so I couldn't give you exact results. But I think that generally speaking, I would not plan on um, getting results on major, major keywords. You know, uh, search engine optimization is something that, you, you know, it's like, it's kind of like geology. It's like time and pressure. You know, that's all it is. You just, over time, you could keep applying pressure, keep getting those links, keep you know, adding content to your site. Uh, one thing we didn't really mention that's really important is add content to your site. You need a lot of content. Um, you know, having a five-page brochureware website, uh, we call brochureware just, you know, five static pages, uh, that is not necessarily going to get you to the top of search engines for a, uh, a highly sought-after keyword. Uh, you need a lot of content. So if you keep writing content, you keep getting the links, uh, make your site generally um, uh, interesting and people want to go to it, you could possibly see, see results over the course of, let's say, six months um, you know, for, for major keywords if you keep at it. All right. Hey, so Rob, can you hear us? Hey, yes, yes I can hear you. Please. Hey, was, was that answer okay? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Just want to check. So Rob's kind of <laughs> like big brother. Yes, uh, Sarab is commenting on the side, saying it could take one week to uh, ten years. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's a difficult question. It is a difficult question. You know, a lot of a lot of attendees today, and it's okay if you come and you don't want to ask questions. Alan and Andres and Brian and Bruce and Chris and Dan and Doug and Eduardo and Gary and GV and Henry and Hugh and Hugo and Jay and Jessica and Jill and Jim and Jerry and John and Julie and Keith. I won't go through the whole list, I suppose, but. Okay. We appreciate you guys coming. Gerardo, yeah. please let us know if you have any other questions. Gerardo asks, if every developer does this, which would be the, the expected place in organic results, meaning which is the most important? If every developer does this, which would be... Hmm. I suppose so the first one. I'd ask you to... I, I, could you repeat, repeat the question again? If every developer does this, what is the best place to be in the organic results? Yeah, and I hope he's talking about um, uh, does search engine optimization. I believe that's what he's referring to. I feel like this is kind of one of those questions off Jeopardy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, if everybody, if every developer does SEO on their site, 
um, what can you expect? I, I, ho I think that's what he's asking. Um, so I guess, you know, you, you, first of all, you have to look at your industry and your competition uh, to determine, you know, how much value you'll actually get for uh, particular, you know, uh, optimizing for particular keywords. Um, we have something called long tail, long tail SEO that um, if, if you find that, let's say, for instance, you're selling T-shirts um, nationwide. You print T-shirts and you ship them out to everybody, you know, around the country. Um, in, in America, you may uh, you may find that ranking for you know design T-shirt is basically you know the first five pages of that are is just full of people that are established companies that you know are impossible to rank in front of in the short term. I would recommend probably in that instance uh, going with uh, keywords that are less sought after but still searched. Um, you'll find that if you look in the keyword tool, you'll find that uh, maybe um, design my um, design my uh, softball ball team T-shirt is a key phrase that is searched maybe 500 times a month and instead of 5,000, which you know, or 5 million design shirts, um, and it may have a much lower um, a competition. So, so. I guess the, to answer the question, you know, every developer out there, every webmaster is going to try to get their site higher in search engines. It's like everybody's climbing to the top, and how do you scramble up there? Um, it's it's a tactical thing. You have to go through and you have to look at your competition, your specific niche, see what your competition's doing, and then kind of make a, an educated decision on, on what would be the most effective use of your time. Or your money, if you want to, if you want to hire this out. Uh, real quick, I just like to throw out there that you know there's a lot of companies out there that offer you know get we'll get you to the top of search engines in five minutes. You know, give us fifty bucks. Um, don't 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 believe in those companies because there are actually situations where they can do more harm than good. Um, you want to do these things naturally. You want Google to think you are a normal company that doesn't you know. Um, Basically, it's one of those things where you don't want to try too hard. You don't want them to think you're trying too hard, at least. So, um, so yeah, it's it's something where you have to look at your niche and kind of um, uh, make an educated decision. All right, Ronnie asked for some tools to optimize images, and Sarab sent you some links there. And Dean says thanks, excellent session. Steve says learned a lot from a brand new user. Thank you, and Rich says great information tonight. Thank you. Um, Harry has a comment, I think, about something we may be able to create in the future. Can you post a list of the SEO guide of recommended tools, sites, or extensions which we should consider using? I think that's a great project for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, there are a whole lot of great guides out there. There's a lot of resources on the Internet, no shortage of them. Um, but ultimately, we will definitely put one on our site. You can keep um, checking in on our category we just go back to cloudaccess.net. Actually, uh, I take that back. Everybody can see my screen still? Uh, yep. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on our new Chrome extension and go to cloudaccess.net. Very good. Yep. I had to throw that in there. Um, so you can keep an eye on, if you go to our knowledge base and check out um, our additional resources, we may actually make this a, uh, a larger category so you can get to it easier. easier. Um, keep checking in on our, our SEO category. We'll keep expanding on this and making it easier to use. Um, ultimately, we're constantly improving these systems. So, uh, so check back frequently on that, and, um, and we will put uh, some, some tools together for you. Great. You know, um, Jay says, the comment really, very true about the SEO spammy companies. Better to build quality content and just make sure you're following the guidelines you guys laid out. Great tips. Peter says, I'm new to Joomla. Was using WordPress before. This was an amazing help. Thank you. Are these tools available in, in WordPress? Um, you mean the well the the external tools that I was using like the you know AdWords and all that stuff the AdWords keyword tool that is all of course available for anything but um, uh, no I mean uh, WordPress does have the ability to change the page title and the meta description and all that stuff so I can answer yes it is okay and um, uh, well, but, well I'll jump in there and say the redirect manager um, that is a very 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 important SEO tool that is not available in WordPress. Um, 
Uh, so, uh, no, I, do, I don't want to make it sound like WordPress is even on the same playing field as Joomla. Okay. But ultimately, uh, you can do these similar things with WordPress. All right. Uh, Jay says the ultimate SEO test is if your mother-in-law can find your site organically. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Funny stuff. Eduardo says, great job. Thanks for all the information. It cleared a lot of questions I had for a while and gave me the confidence I needed as I realize I'm doing things the right way. Hey, you know what? That's a quote for the web page. Henry says, SEO is undertaught. Good webinar. I think it's the missing link. Thank you. Julie says, this was an excellent webinar. I plan to watch again. Lots of great tips. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, really cool. Um, we want to thank everyone for attending. And um, we're going to have to say good night at this point or good day, good morning, good afternoon. We know we have attendees from all over the world. Um, Sarab, you want to say goodbye? Yes, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> and good night. Uh, take care. Don't forget youtube.com forward slash cloud access. You can check out a copy of this webinar. It'll be posted in the morning. And always check back to our webinars page for some upcoming free webinars. And as you see John doing now, go ahead and install the yeah. cloud access. Yeah, here. I'm going to go. I'll show everybody how to do it here. Uh, cloud access. Down. Oh, no, wait, wait. Sorry. Uh, Chrome. Extensions. You'll get to the Chrome Web Store, Chrome Extensions, and we'll wait for it. And then just go to cloud. Just type in cloudaccess.net, and you'll see our wonderful extension. You can add it to Chrome. You can rate it. It is very, very useful. You know, we've got all sorts of links to our knowledge base and submit a ticket, our YouTube channel. Very, very cool. Perhaps even an SEO webinar link there one day. Yes, we will continue uh, upgrading this. All right, thanks, everybody. Take care, and um, check back with us soon. We'll see you around. Bye now.